If I was in elementary school, Rubik's cubes became very, very popular. They were introduced then and, and were all the craze. And I have to admit, I was not very good at completing Rubik's cubes. Once they were all mixed up, I could never get them back into the right color. I thought, well, all the colors are on the same side. So every once in a while, I would get really frustrated. And I would, I would think, well, the, the point here is to solve the cube, right? To get all the colors on one, one side. So what's really the problem if I do that by taking off the stickers and putting them all back together, you know, and reattaching the stickers then so everything's on one color. Now that for me as a, as a young person posed an ethical dilemma, of course, you know, is that that's not really the way these things were supposed to be completed. But if the purpose was to solve the puzzle, then wasn't I doing that and doing so? So I used to justify that to myself sometimes, but you know, as adults in, in, especially in our professional realms, we face uh, larger ethical dilemmas than how to solve a Rubik's cube. And certainly public relations is no different. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about ethics and public relations, where those things intersect and how public relations is really impacted and affected by the nature of ethics. So let's start off by defining what we mean by ethics in, in general. So ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behavior uh, or the conducting of an activity. So again, these, these moral principles, some large, some small, but they govern our behavior and the way that we conduct ourselves, the way that we engage in a given activity. They essentially gauge our, our understanding of right or wrong in any given situation. Now, so that's ethics in general, but how does that impact then public relations? Well, public relations and ethics intersect in the idea that the, the, the act in, in service of the public good, public relations should act in service of the public good in addressing issues, ideally before they become a problem or a crisis. This is where um, ethics comes in. The idea that public relations at its heart should be acting in the, uh, in the good of the public in the good of the, the, the public as a whole in addressing these issues again, ideally before they come up, but, uh, but even, you know, after that, at times when there is a crisis or a problem, public relations steps in then to, to serve in the, the, um, the benefit of the public good as well there. So, um, so the, you know, it can get complicated though. What does that mean to act in the, in the service of public good and addressing these issues? So we, we need to take a, a little deeper look at the different types of what we call normative ethics, normative ethics. So um, we're going to take a look at a few different types here. The first are what we call teleological ethics, right? Teleological ethics, teleological ethics basically uh, present ethics in the form of a utilitarianism, right? Um, so that the, we're looking at ethics in the sense that the, the, what is going to do the greatest good for the most people. The greatest good for the most people. So it says that that we as people and, and as public relation or public relations practitioners have an obligation to make choices and to, to behave in a way that's going to bring the greatest amount of good for the most people, even when sometimes that could contradict what we feel is our own good. You know, our own good personally may not be what's best for the greatest number of people, but it, that in general teleological ethics says, well, we, we have a responsibility to act in the benefit of the most people at any given time. The one criticism of that though, is that, you know, how accurately can we really predict outcomes? You know, we may be saying to ourselves, well, this is what is going to be best for the most amount of people, the greatest number of people in this situation. But what if we're wrong? How do we really know that? Um, so, so we have to be cautious of uh, and unaware of that when we're thinking about teleological ethics too. to, to how how accurately can we really predict these outcomes? We, you know, is, is what we think is the greatest good for the, the most people? Uh, is that really the case? And if, if not, then, then where does that leave us? So, but that's one type of norm, normative ethics, teleological ethics, and, and something to consider there. Um, the, the other type of ethics that we can look at is deontological ethics. That's one we're going to examine here, deontological ethics and deontological ethics says, okay, regardless of what may be the best for the most people at the most time, deontological ethics says there's an absolutism here rather than a utilitarianism in terms of what's going to be best for the most amount of people at the right time or at that particular time, there's an absolutism here that says that moral absolutes apply to all. Right. And that, uh, that, that regardless of whether or not it's right for the most people, if it's right, then it's right. Even if it's only right, you know, only going to positively affect a small number of people and, and alienate some others. If that's what's right, then that's what's right. And that's deontological ethics says that there's an absolutism that moral absolutes apply to everyone in every situation, um, regardless. 
the the criticism the major criticism here the question here though the, the counter acts this is uh, are ethics universal are there things that are absolutes uh, are there things that are that are that are absolutely should be absolutely applied to everyone in every situation um, and so are ethics universal what what if my ethics what if the ethics that i think are absolute and universal are different for other people does that negate them and and do i have an obligation then to consider um, the, the fact that that's not the same for everybody else. So, um, so we do run into these issues too, with the ontological ethics as well, but, but between these two teleological and the ontological ethics, they primarily guide our decision-making in a professional sense in public relations and most other fields. Now there is one other um, type of normative ethics. It's, it's, we call, um, virtue ethics. Right. Virtue ethics and virtue ethics basically are what we would call agent based. Yeah, they're basically based on that person, agent based, the agent being the person in question, the person viewing this, the person perceiving the person making this decision. Right? And they depend on individual virtual and practical wisdom. So, but, but then the, the, the issue is that when we depend on individual virtue, obviously you're depending on that individual to, to make a decision and to, to say what is right based on, on an individual basis. And so we have to ask ourselves then is virtue the same for all individuals? You know, does this vary from person to person? And if so, do the, do our ethics then vary from person to person? Are we all held to a different uh, level of responsibility ethically? And and uh, is there no absolute in terms of um, how ethics should be applied? Are we all on a different playing field? In other words, are we all playing by different rules. Um, so, for our purposes in the in the professional setting for public relations, we're really not going to focus too much on virtue ethics. We're going to say, okay, there are virtue, there are ethics that apply to all people, whether those are teleological or deontological ethics, um, but they do really apply to all people in all situations. And, and we're not going to just base this on an individual's perception. It's not everybody making up their own rules. Um, we're going to have some standard here. So when we look at professional ethics, specifically within the field of public relations, there are some guidelines for us that have been laid out. Um, for example, we can look at, at the, at the PRSA code of ethics. Okay. The public relations society of America has laid out what they call a code of ethics. And it really has these two, um, different branches, so to speak, that come out of here. One is professional values and the other is provisions of conduct. Okay. So professional values, the PRSA code of ethics in terms of professional values lays out these six elements, um, that include advocacy, honesty, expertise, independence, loyalty, and fairness. These are things that should be um, viewed at, for, um, should be present for all public relations practitioners. We should all be uh, effective advocates. We should all be honest. We should uh, demonstrate our expertise, our independence, our loyalty, and our fairness to our clients and things, and to also to the society at large, right? So these are our professional values, things that should be demonstrated by uh, inherently by all public relations practitioners. And they also have these, what we call these provisions of conduct, ways that we should behave then in, around things, including things like the free flow of information. We should be supportive of a free flow of information. We should be supportive of competition and, and, and fair competition, right? We should encourage that and we should um, want that competition. We should be in favor of and, and practice good disclosure of information, of safeguarding confidences uh, of our clients. And, and, you know, we may not have the same legal protections as like a lawyer client confidentiality, but we still have an obligation to safeguard the confidences of our, of our clients, even former clients, and not just go sharing trade secrets with, with people, with their competitors or people like that. So we have to guard against conflicts of interest and we have to recognize those and, and admit those when they're present and, and work against that. And then we have to do what we can to enhance the profession in general. That's a, that's a, uh, a conduct expectation for any practitioner of public relations that we do what we can to enhance the profession and put public relations in the best possible light. So we do have these guides for professional ethics as well. There's the PRSA, uh, PRSA code of conduct and code of ethics um, that they lay out here with these different um, stipulations as to how we should behave. There are a couple of additional ethical considerations that we need to keep in mind as well as these, this professional code of conduct that's laid out by the um, PRSA. So um, let's uh, look at what those are as well. So 
we do have personal ethics that enter into this. If we're considering whether or not we should take on a client, whether or not we should follow the instructions of a client, we can do so in good conscience and good faith. And uh, so we need to, our personal ethics then enter into that. If we're asked to do something that would be outside of our own personal comfort zone, or as far as ethics, then, then that should factor into things as well. So, so that does play a role in addition to these, these professional ethics that we've discussed, our per personal ethics do enter into this. Of course, we also, as practitioners of public relations have a responsibility for social responsibility, the ethics of social responsibility. Um, are we doing something that's going to be harmful to our society or harmful to, you know, maybe the environment or harmful in, in some ways that uh, would, would violate a, a larger, larger social contract Then we need to, to be aware of that and, uh, take it into consideration as well as part of our, um, our ethical considerations. And finally, we need to think about the, the, the ethics surrounding visual communication, um, the images that we're, we're presenting and we're using in campaigns and, and putting out there for the public. Are they visually responsible? First of all, do they, do they conform with social norms? Are they, are they accurate? Are they fair? Are they, have they been doctored in some way? We want to be cautious about those types of things. So we have a responsibility, especially as these things become more um, possible. It, it's incredibly easy now for us to manipulate uh, visual um, presentation of information. We need to be sure we're doing so in an ethical way, even if it's not specifically doctored. Maybe we're not changing the actual picture, but maybe we're just framing it and cropping different things out, and uh, you know, in a way that that may not be fair. Maybe manipulating the emotions or the the interpretation there. So, in general, we need to just consider ethics. We need to be ethical. We have these professional standards. We have our personal standards. We have our, our, our social responsibility ethics and, and all those things. We need to factor all this in to our role and our um, efforts as public relations practitioners. If you have questions about, uh, about ethics related to public relations, anything along those lines, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will uh, see public relations in a new light and see how we as practitioners of public relations can engage in these things in an ethical way, following these professional and personal standards.